Okay, so now that I've got all that out of the way, I'm going to give you my biggest tips. Keep that have low blood, low blood, low blood pressure. Wow, I can't talk. When it comes to truly studying for a farm, the four most important things you need to know are. Hello, friends, and welcome to today's video. So, as you can probably tell from the title, this video is all about pharmacology. Oh, sweet, sweet pharmacology. Before we get into this video, um, if you're not already, you should go ahead and subscribe. All it does is notify you anytime that I post a video. And while you're there, click the bell. The bell is a little button you can click and it will just specifically notify you when I post a video more so than subscribing will do. YouTube has changed their rules recently and so the way they notify people is not only through subscription but also through the bell. So if you could click the bell, that would be awesome and it will just let you know anytime I post a video. If you guys see me looking down at all it's just because I have a piece of paper in front of me right now with everything I wanted to cover in today's video so that I don't forget anything because I think this video will be so helpful I've gotten so many requests from people to do this video so I really hope it helps you guys and if you see me looking down it's just at the piece of paper that has all the information that I want to say on it so first of all I want to let you know what the study of pharmacology is if you don't know what pharmacology is it's just the study of drugs and everything that drugs do and in medicine and in nursing we use a lot of pharmacology pharmaceuticals so you need to know about the drugs that you're giving your patients and that's why you have to take this class. Something I want to cover before I get too deep into this video is part of the reason why I almost didn't want to make this video and it's because of the way my teacher taught it. I don't know if this is how every teacher teaches it. I know a lot of teachers do it this way. I've talked to multiple people from other schools other than mine and their teachers taught it like this as well so I would hope that this information would work for you too but I can't guarantee that. So my teacher let us use what she called drug cards. Drug cards were just flash cards that we were allowed to make. At the beginning of a section, say there were 16 chapters in a section, which was pretty accurate most of the time, you're given a section and you're given all the chapters you need to read. I didn't choose to read all those chapters, but she would also, in our syllabus, she listed the drugs from all the chapters that were in that section that we needed to know in bold, and we could make what were called drug cards from those. So the bold drugs were the ones that were in the chapters that you needed to know. Anything that wasn't bold in the chapter, you didn't really need to worry about. But if it was bold on the syllabus, you needed to make a drug card for it. And what that meant is you go into the book, you write down not everything, but information specific to that drug, which what to write down I'll talk about later. But you would write down information about that drug, put it on a little flash card, just like a normal index size card, and you were allowed to bring those to class to study from. You could use them on exams, you couldn't use them on quizzes. But the reason my teacher did this is because she felt like it's impossible for you to learn everything about every single drug and have it in your brain at all times. There's just no way. There's way too many drugs out there and it's just not possible. She felt that it was justified that we could learn the information if we went into our books and took the time to write out everything about these specific drugs that she told us to write about and we took the time to make them neat and organized and write down the information that we needed, we should be able to use those on exams because in the real world, you're gonna be using an electronic machine to distribute medication and that machine will give you indicators if something's wrong, if the patient shouldn't be taking that. Obviously, you shouldn't rely solely on that machine so you should have the information in your head of okay if a patient has this disease I expect them to take this medication or whatever but it's impossible for you to know everything so I have heard of a lot of other teachers doing this so hopefully yours will do that because I think it's a great resource okay so now that I've got all that out of the way I'm going to give you my biggest tips so tip number one is to only know the most important four things and I'm going to tell you exactly what I mean by that this is something my teacher told me that has stuck with me and stuck with me through the whole class and will continue to stick with me through nursing school she said when it comes to pharmacology, there's no way you're gonna know everything The four most important things you need to know are number one who who is who can take this drug who is also known as Indications in the drug book you will see something listed as indications and that means who is this drug indicated for who should be taking this drug So if I have a patient with COPD, what drugs should he be taking? So you need to know who second of all you want to know can't who can't take these drugs. You'll also see this listed in your book as contraindications, which is who is this drug contraindicated for, who can't take it, or interactions. Interactions are drugs that interact with the drug you're talking about. So if I have a patient who's taking an herbal supplement that negatively interacts with a certain drug, I'm not gonna give them that certain drug because of the supplement they've been taking. Number three is annoying. <laughs> annoying means what are some of the side effects that are annoying? You know, like sweating, diarrhea, 
stuff. A stomach ache, nausea, those things are annoying, but you're not gonna die from them. They're annoying, I mean, I guess you could die from diarrhea if it's severe, but you're not gonna die from them, they're not gonna kill you, they're just uh, a little bit annoying. And the fourth thing is kill you. What is gonna kill you about this drug? If your patient starts showing symptoms of they're not breathing, so they're having an allergic reaction, that can kill you. If they're having angioedema, which is obscene swelling, that can kill you. And then number five, which I don't have on there, but is important, what are the therapeutic things that happen with this drug? So when we give the drug, what do we want to happen? What do we want to see the patient doing after they've taken it? If they have a fever, we want to see their fever go down. If they have low blood, low blood, low blood pressure, wow, I can't talk. If they have low blood pressure and we're giving them something to increase their blood pressure, we want to see their blood pressure increase. So you want to know who can take the drug, who can't take the drug. What are the annoying things that the drugs do when you take them? And what does it look like if the drug's about to kill your patient? And then five, which is kind of not a number, but I would include it. What's therapeutic about this drug? What are the good things we're looking for? That is all you need to know in pharmacology. Those are the most important things. So I think those are my biggest, biggest tips for pharmacology is know those big things. Yes, the book is important, and yes, you should read it, and yes, you should know stuff about the drugs, but don't focus on every single word in the book. There's no way you're going to learn all that information. It's physically not possible, and I don't want you to waste all your time studying information that's not going to be on the test and isn't going to be relevant in the real world practice. When it comes to truly studying for farm, read the textbook. Now I know I just said don't read the whole textbook, but it's true. Read the textbook, go through, and find those four or five important things that I just listed to you in your book and you will be good to go, I promise you. Lastly is rewriting. This is what I've always done and has always worked for me since I've been in middle and high school. I've been doing this, and that's rewriting your notes. So I'm gonna make a whole separate video on how I take notes, and I will post that for you guys. Rewriting your notes I think is super helpful, at least it always has been for me. The more you write something, the more it sinks in your brain, and the more you begin to truly absorb and understand it. And so what I would recommend doing is going through the textbook, finding those four or five things that I said, about each drug that you need to know for your exams, highlight in the book, then go through with a notebook paper and write out everything that you just read and highlighted, then rewrite it onto a note card. At that point, you've read the information once, you've read it a second time when you highlighted it, you wrote it once from transferring from highlight to notebook paper, and you wrote it a second time writing it from notebook paper to flashcard, and then you can just flip through the flashcard a couple times. And I really think that will help prepare you because you've seen the information almost five times at that point, it should really be sticking in your brain at that point. So those are my biggest tips for studying for pharmacology. Now, obviously, if your teacher doesn't do the whole note card thing, then this video may not help you as much. I really hope that your teachers do do that because I think it's so beneficial and I really think you do learn well that way. I wish you all the best of luck in taking farm. If you have any questions or anything like that that I didn't cover, comment down below and I'll be happy to respond to your comment with whatever question you have. So yeah, I hope this video helps you guys. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye guys!